Hey, welcome to Jesus My King podcast. This is God Talk with Anna and Kelly, and we are excited to be here today. It's always good to get together. I just love this time with you, Anna, and um, just rekindling the fire in our hearts, you know, just mm-hmm. taking that time, someone to encourage and and uplift myself and hopefully I do the same for you. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Hopefully mm-hmm. hopefully that's what happens for all you guys listening to. That's mm-hmm. that's part of the reason we do this is cuz it's exciting to mm-hmm. to be together and to have people that um can encourage each other. Yes. There, there needs to be another voice. I feel like the, especially the media, is a lot of doom and gloom. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of control through fear. Right. Um, it's very easy to steer um, a people when there's a lot of fear involved. Right. And, you know, you see how the focus becomes like the death toll every day. Get caught up in your right. headlines. The yeah. death toll is yeah. now to this <laughs> number, which, you know, there's a lot going on yeah. with the stats are being fudged, you know, and, and it's not all yeah. what they think they're saying well and whether it's true or not true mm -hmm. what does god say about that yes right and so as 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 people of god as the children of god the children of the creator of the universe i think he he doesn't call us to fear and he wants us to focus on kingdom things let's Mm -hmm. focus on him and focus on staring at him because like peter remember when peter was um saying lord if it's really you let me call me and i'll come out of the boat and i'll walk to you yeah and then he starts to walk Mm -hmm. and then he realized that he's like walking on the water Mm -hmm. and he looks down at his circumstance and he starts to drown right and that's exactly that is really mm -hmm. exactly what's going on Mm -hmm. you know if you start to get caught up in the news and the things that are going on and you look around with what's going on, you're going to start believing, Yeah, you know, other than what God has for you. And that's when like the fear and anxiety and the depression kicks in and feeling alone and feeling, and that sounds just like the agenda of the enemy of our souls. Right. And that is not what God calls us to. That is not what he created us for. And gosh, you know, it's really good when you get to a growth point in your relationship with Christ that when you hear those things, I mean, I'm, I, I was telling you, Anna, I'm struggling with that this week. You know, I hear some things about myself and then I'm like, that is, that's not true. And, you know, mm-hmm. just acknowledging that that's not true and then asking the Lord what he says. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes it's hard to do that when you're feeling so down on yourself or about other things. But that's, that's one step in growth. Mm-hmm. And that's something, that's the first step or, you know, close to, okay, what does the Lord say about this? Yeah. You know, what, because the enemy will whisper in your ear all the time. Mm-hmm. And that's not what he has for us. Mm-hmm. And I know we were talking about going through dark night of the soul. Yeah. Um, and I, there's a lot of people around the world that are going through a dark night of yeah. the soul. Yeah. Um, and some of them know and have the hope of Jesus Christ and the hope of right. resurrection. That right. he is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Right. And that he brings things back to life. Mm-hmm. And then some people have that hope. Um, and some people don't, and that's that's a very dark, 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 dark right. night, you know, right. to have no hope. In yeah, the and so there's a difference. Let's let's try to explain the dark night of the soul a little bit um, without a huge amount of detail, mm-hmm. um, because that's what you know. It's it's a time in your life as a Christian, mm-hmm. as a believer, where you feel like you're not hearing from God as well. You're not, you know, your prayers when you pray, you're not, you're not. Um, hearing back or feeling his presence um, when you worship your worship doesn't feel the same when you listen to sermons you know there's times where you know for myself like I, I there's certain things that really light me on fire and I'm so excited and then there's you know when I'm going through these stages I'm like nothing sound nothing Nothing seems to light that fire. I mean, and even reading the Bible, okay, I'm not just saying sermons and things like that, but, you know, the time in your closet listening to the Lord and the time you're worshiping Him and the time you're reading your Bible, um, sometimes you're just not getting a heavy connection. And sometimes, so the dark night of the soul is when He kind of steps back. He's not left you, Mm -hmm. but He's focusing more on your relation, your your spirit-to-spirit communication instead of um, worshiping through your soul to your spirit, you know, in the fleshly way, reaching 
in the presence of the spirit. Is that, does that mm-hmm. sound, is yeah. that understandable? Yeah. Okay. And so he wants, he wants to do spirit to spirit. He wants to go deeper in your, in your relationship mm-hmm. with him. And so it's kind of like a, a training ground, a teaching ground, and it feels very lonely. And I'm probably there right now for a little bit, yeah. you know, so, you know, I've kind of struggled with that, but the good, but but it is good to be reminded of that and that, you know what, this is, this is for spiritual promotion. This is yes. because he's teaching me and I'm going to learn something from it. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, you can embrace that. Now, if you don't have Jesus and you have a dark time, I mean, that's mm-hmm. a very scary place yes. to be. Um, so <laughs> that's what we want to share the hope that is in Christ like there yeah. is no matter what the circumstances is the kingdom of God is here and right. there is peace and hope available today like right now right. in this moment if you just accept the sacrifice that the creator of the universe yeah. became a human being and died for our sins to deliver us from the kingdom of darkness right. into the kingdom of his wonderful light. If we accept that and we verbalize that and say, you know, a lot of we people can't meet it. in church right now. Yeah. But you can say that in your own home. You can say, Jesus, I receive your free gift and just fall on your, your knees yeah. and say, I repent. I repent for my sin. I turn from that life of sin and I turn yeah. to you. Just show me the yeah. way I will go. And God will do it. He is right. almighty, all powerful. He will bring the right people. He will bring the right resources he will bring it and you don't need to wait until you're in in a particular place or you've gotten rid of this or gotten rid of that because Jesus meets you where you are that's right you know and he he is that great father that's always waiting for us even as a believer and when you make mistakes and you trip and you fall guess what he's not there scolding you and grounding you Mm -hmm. he's there to pick you up and love you Mm -hmm. and forgive you you know so um, and he will grow us. His goal is to, just like a baby, you know, as parents, you start out with the newborn and they're drinking milk. Right. And then they start to move on to some, you know, mash pureed foods. Mm-hmm. And then they start to get teeth. Mm-hmm. And then they can start to eat little bits of meat and, and you know, foods that are a little bit tougher to digest yeah. until they're like your, the age of your kids mm-hmm. where you can just serve them a plate of green beans and yeah. steak and whatever and they <laughs> yeah. can just eat the food. That's the same goal. Like as we're growing spiritually, we're moving on from that newborn phase to the toddler phase to the young child right. all the way. The goal is maturity here. Right. In sanctification. I mean, just just walking your life out and learning who he is. I mean, mm-hmm. we don't have every revelation when we get saved. And we are not going to have every le- revelation until we get to heaven. Mm-hmm. And who knows? I mean, who knows what God has for there? Yes. <laughs> who knows if we have to mm-hmm. learn more there or what? But, yes. Um, but he's good. And especially in a time of struggle. Okay, baby. <laughs> in a time of struggle, you know, and not knowing what's going on in the world, um, they can take away your freedoms. They can take away, you know, your time to worship at church, whatever it may be. But if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, they can never take that away from you. They can kill you, and they can't take that away from you. So, you know, in a world where things seem to slowly be getting darker, um, this is this is so important that that we have Jesus mm-hmm. um, yeah that's right so I want to read um, this passage is from Daniel I'm trying to find it real quick here okay so there's a story where Nebuchadnezzar the king of the empire at that time of the world empire Um, has this dream and he calls up the astrologers and the magicians and the people who you know get revelation from spirits and different things he calls them up and he tells them i'm not going to tell you my dream you're going to tell me my dream and you're going to tell me what it means and he was basically he said if you don't you die and they're like that's impossible you tell us the dream and we'll interpret he's like no you're going to tell me the dream the only person who was able to tell the king the dream was daniel by the spirit of God, the spirit of the living God, which is available to us. This is huge. It is available to us. If you call on the name of the creator, the call the name of the Lord, whoever calls the name of the Lord will be saved and you have access to the spirit of God. 
Yeah, that created everything. Yes. Woohoo! <laughs> that is that is so exciting. So no yeah. matter what the circumstance, you have access to all the resources of heaven right now. Right. So there is hope. There is hope in the darkest places. Mm-hmm. There's always hope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is the dream. So this is Daniel 2, uh, verse 36, reading from the New Living. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay hold on let me back up okay so he says in 29 while your majesty was sleeping you dreamed about coming events he god who reveals secrets has shown you what is going to happen now listen closely because this involves our time and our era and it is not because I am wiser than anyone else that I know the secret of your dream but because God wants you to understand what is in your heart In your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge shining statue of a man. It was a frightening sight. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Its belly and thighs were bronze. Its legs were iron. Its feet were a combination of iron and baked clay. As you watched, a rock was cut from the mountain, but not by human hands. It struck the feet of iron and clay and smashed them to bits. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. Then the wind blew them away without a trace, like chaff on a threshing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. That was the dream. Now we will tell the king what it means. Your majesty, you are the greatest of kings. Mm -hmm. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and honor. Do you see how it all comes from God? He has made you the ruler of all the inhabitants, over all the inhabited world, and has put you even the wild animals and birds under your control. You are the head of gold. But after your kingdom comes to an end, another kingdom inferior to yours will rise to your place. After that kingdom has fallen, yet a third kingdom, represented by bronze, will rise to the world. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth one, as strong as iron. That kingdom will smash and crush all the previous empires, just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. The feet and toes you saw were a combination of iron and baked clay, showing that this kingdom will be divided. Like iron mixed with clay, it will have some of the strength of iron, but while some other parts of it will be as strong as iron, other parts will be as weak as clay. This mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other through intermarriage, but they will not hold together just as iron and clay do not mix. During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness, but it will stand forever. That is the meaning of the rock cut from the mountain, though not by human hands that crushed to pieces a statue of iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold. The great God was showing the king what will happen in the future. That dream is true and its meaning is certain. Mm -hmm. So I can't get all into it, but I will say, so that kingdom, the gold was Nebuchadnezzar at that time, Mm -hmm. the kingdom of Babylon. Then the one that followed the chest and the arms was, it broke up into the Medes and the Persians. Mm -hmm. Um, And then after that was um, the bronze, that was the Greeks, Alexander the Great. Um, And then following the Greeks, the strongest iron was the Roman Empire. And we know that Jesus was born during that time, Mm -hmm. the the rise of the Roman Empire. So uh, during the Roman Empire. Um, Then that kingdom um, was smashed and crushed. And then um, so the feet and the toes, a combination of iron and baked clay, that's our time. Mm -hmm. So this is how relevant this is. We are living during that Neo-Roman Empire where it's there's some of the old about like iron and strongness. Mm -hmm. And we see like those powers and authorities in the U.S. and China and Mm -hmm. all of that. But it's also mixed with clay so that it's it's a new like time. And then you see how um, the toes and it has to do with alliances, which lines up with like United Nations and a lot Mm -hmm. of nations forming alliances. 
alliances with each other. Right. Um, and then you see that this rock comes and crushes those kingdoms and forms a kingdom that lasts forever. Mm. That is what is so exciting about our time. No matter what you see in the darkness in the world, God is establishing a new kingdom. Right. And so this is an everlasting kingdom that has no end. Um, and then I will connect the dots here with Luke. Um, hold on, Matthew. Here, let me let me find it here. Okay. So Jesus asked the disciples um, after he's done healing people. Um, so at a certain time, they come to the village of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked them this very important question. This is the question that the eternal God asks of every single one of us. He says, who do you say I am? That is the question that everybody's going to stand and have to answer. You're going to answer in this life on the earth side, and you're going to have to answer this when you're in eternity standing right. before him. Who do you say I am? If you're a child of God and you claim him as Christ and your Messiah, then you enter into a time of joyful eternity mm -hmm. with God the Father and with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So Simon Peter at that time says, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the son of the living God. So Jesus says to him, God bless you. You didn't get that answer out of books or from teachers. My father in heaven, God himself revealed that to you, that that is who I really am. And then Jesus says, um, so I'm going to skip a little bit here. He says, this is the rock. The rock is Jesus, mm. the Messiah. This is the rock on which I will put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. Hmm. That is so exciting. Like that is real hope. Right. That is real joy. That is real excitement. That's us. Now, what does that mean to you, Anna? Does that mean religion? No, this is a kingdom. That's, <laughs> right. And that's one, one of the things that we've been talking yeah. about that is so exciting when we do this podcast. Yeah. We are a kingdom people. This is a real kingdom. This is not religion. This is not church. This is a kingdom. Mm -hmm. This is God's kingdom. This is so way past yeah. denominations and, right. and petty arguments. Right. This is so way above that. Right. And like we have got to get our minds aligned with that right. because this is what and we're living we've in. We've got a denomination to denomination. We have got to stop arguing. We have got to love each other and focus, refocus your eyes back on Jesus. Who's important here, your denomination or Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what these guys are doing over here or Jesus? Mm -hmm. Like, this is a time, it really, I'll, I'll get on my soapbox for a sure, second. Sure, yes, preach girl, no, preach. It's, it just really, it hurts because I've been, I've been experiencing this myself. But, um, you know, when, when I love Jesus with all of my heart, and I have a friend in a different denomination who loves Jesus with all their heart. And I can see it in them. But when you're criticized for the way that you love Jesus, because it's different than the way they love Jesus, um, we're just tearing up the kingdom. We're, mm -hmm. we're def we are defeating ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what did Jesus say? I mean, he was talking about when, when they're casting out demons, they said, you're casting out from Beelzebub. And he said, a kingdom divided mm -hmm. will never stand. Well, it's the same for us. Mm -hmm. A kingdom divided will never stand. If we're fighting against ourselves, how are we going to be that powerful mm -hmm. church and kingdom that he wants us to be? Mm -hmm. So we need to refocus our eyes because yes. this is out of control and ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm yes. done with it. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yes. And so, and so I'm, I'm getting ready. There's a worship song that says, I'm getting ready to see something I've never seen. God is doing a new thing. He has been yes. saying that over and over again. He's doing a, good, a new thing. And I don't care what anybody else is doing, but I'm putting my eyes on the Lord yeah. and I am aligning and saying, yes, Lord, to whatever it is that he's mm -hmm. doing. Because, wow, it is amazing. Well, Anna, can God do a new thing or does he only do what he's always done? Oh, he makes new things all the time. <laughs> That's why we're created. Yeah. We are creative because we are created in his image and he is creative and That's he's right. always creating. That's right. So that's why, you know, we have artists and we have new music and we have new sounds and new things and new barbecue So ways. to say that God doesn't do anything new would, would not be his character. No. You know, um, of course it has to be in align, alignment with his character mm -hmm. and with the Bible and, you know, it wouldn't be out of his character, mm -hmm. but we can't 
if we sit and expect the same thing that he's always done, even like when they talk about revival and they talk about um, how it happened in the past, you know, if you sit there and do the things you did in the past to start revival, it's not going to start revival Mm -hmm. because God wants to do a new thing, Mm -hmm. you know, and we, we act on the spirit of God, not on, on our actions. Right. You know, or even our feelings. If, If you feel like your feelings are not aligning with the truth of his word, that you are loved that he his thoughts to you are are greater than your thoughts like whatever is the best thing that you could want for your kid he wants something even better for you right. and if your thoughts are not that or condemnation that's not of that's god right. that's so right. just aligning saying okay i may feel this way acknowledge your feeling you know don't deny your right. feeling acknowledge your feeling but say that's not the truth Right. This is the truth. This is the promises of yeah. God. And actually, it's good to renounce those thoughts. Mm-hmm. And I've had to do that lately. <laughs> I mean, if we're honest, I yeah. think everybody, if we're, if we're aware of it, we need to be doing that, you know, daily or weekly or whatever. But, you know, I, I struggle with doing this podcast. I struggle with my words, and it's it's embarrassing to me. And, you know, the Lord keeps calling me to do it. And I'm like, God, mm-hmm. fix me. Do you feel but, like Moses? You yes, just stumble over your words. Yes. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing with me? What, mm-hmm. what am I doing here? But, um, you know what? Sometimes I go back and I listen. I'm like, you know, it's not as bad as I thought for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he is he is working and mm-hmm. I need to renounce those things because that's the enemy whispering in my ear. That's not God's character. God believes in me. Yes. And he believes in the plans he has he is for me. for you. Yeah. yeah. And anybody who says that's not true, that's not of Christ because he loves you. Mm-hmm. He created you for you to succeed in the plans he has for you for your life. Mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't always look the way we thought it would, but he's always with us he's never leaving us and he's always protecting us and protection can look different ways but Mm -hmm. it's his character to love us and walk with us and guide us throughout our life Mm -hmm. so i'm getting over myself and i'm renouncing those feelings that i've had so you renounce them and you give them to jesus and you say i don't want these anymore and then you say god what do you say about me when i hear that i'm not good enough what do you say Mm -hmm. and that's the truth yeah that's the truth (laughs) that's the truth you know there's i've been seeing a saying on um on social media that you know there's like necklaces and different just different sayings that are like you are enough let me tell you without god i am not enough right that's not true Mm -hmm. i i am not enough by by my own strength my own human spirit i am not enough but when i realize that i have the creator of the universe who's got my back and that whatever situation i'm in i can call on the holy spirit of god and that he even sends he is so good that he even can assign angels to your situation whoa then i go man i may not feel like enough but he is enough and he is my strength and i am enough because i'm his that's right you know now i am complete in christ covered by his blood Mm -hmm. filled with the holy spirit inside out all around me before me behind me yes and you die to yourself and you submit to his will and and he lives through you Mm -hmm. you know that's that's awesome Mm -hmm. that's how it i mean you know we we see those talk about those things and we shouldn't always assume that everybody you know some people assume that they these people think they are enough on their own well you know get to know people get to know who they are and if you're in Christ I mean because sometimes I'll say things Mm -hmm. like I mean, I don't really talk about myself too much, but, you know, if, like, it, to family members and stuff, if, if, I mean, this has come up, like, you know, that I'm not good enough, I'm not this or whatever, but if I say I am enough, it's because Jesus is enough yes. in me. You know, if mm-hmm. I have Christ in me, I'm enough because of Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, not because of myself or, you know, or when we say we should love ourselves, we really, we really should love ourselves because Jesus loves us and we should love mm-hmm. how he has created us. But we should love ourselves enough to grow so that we can serve Jesus mm-hmm. and reflect his love through us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love, that reminds me of that verse where this is, this is what God says to us. He says to humankind, he says, let him who boasts, boast, boast in this. 
that he knows me yeah that he, you know the ways of god that you know his character and that's been one of the things that i want to grow in one of the areas is getting to know my heavenly father mm-hmm. and the way that he works because jesus said that when he was on planet earth with his disciples he kept saying you know the father and you know how he works yeah. They did not know. They were clueless. Right. They, they did not understand yeah. until but Jesus died and resurrected. Me, you've, you've seen the Father. But yes. you know what? That is a that's a huge thing in 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 the Christian community mm-hmm. and outside of the Christian community right now is um, a lot of Christians don't know God's character. Yeah, we don't know God's character. Therefore, we misunderstand the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, we think that uh, there's so many ways if you didn't understand god's character you could say that god contradicted himself in the bible but you also have to read the whole bible to understand that Mm -hmm. and if you're a christian and you haven't read the whole bible i would strongly recommend it strongly because Mm -hmm. it's hard to call yourself something when you don't know what you're talking about yeah i mean now don't get me wrong if you've received christ he's going to give you his spirit and he's going to prompt you and give you revelation in, in certain ways but it's just like you had said earlier you know you start out on on baby things and then you grow and part of growing in your in your faith and your walk is definitely reading the bible mm-hmm. and or learning god's character mm-hmm. that's huge mm-hmm. yes jesus is the incarnate word of god so how lucky are we how blessed are we that we even can have like six or seven Bibles sitting around our home. Yeah. And we're talking about believers in the other side of the world, like in Iran, North Korea, um, these other places where rarely is there ever a Bible. Rarely. And Mm -hmm. they're just sharing verses. They're memorizing them and passing them them on. Yes. Yes. And they memorize Mm -hmm. like like they try to memorize like 152 verses mm-hmm. or this many verses and they, they're trying to pass it on and whenever they can find written pages of scripture that is the most valued treasure there ever was right. like we talk about you know first there was like the toilet paper you mm-hmm. know covetousness of yeah, that you yeah. know people were like hoarding that and then it just became me yeah. you know and people were like next is gonna be the bible meat. guys Yes. There's a time coming yes. where we, we may not, I mean, if you kind of look at what's been going on in the media and stuff with the churches and stuff, there might be a time where we might not be allowed to mm-hmm. have the word of God or have it in public or, you know, we, I mean, the Bible talks about in the end times about these things happening. Mm-hmm. So, um, guard the word of heart, the, the word of yeah. God in your heart. Yeah. That should be like top priority is like his word in mm-hmm. your heart. Yeah. Yeah. So, pretty awesome mm-hmm. stuff. Yes. You got anything else, Anna? <laughs> um, let me <laughs> see got? here. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I've been praying. There's a lot of information going on. You know, there's a lot of videos. Like, my mom will send me, you know, YouTube videos mm-hmm. and videos about this is the conspiracy of what's going on, or this is what's really going on, yeah. or um, these organizations are, this is what they're oh, trying yeah. to do to us, yeah. you know. And for me, it just gets very overwhelming. You know, uh-huh. I'm like, oh my Lord, Jesus, there's so much information. We're living in that generation and that time where it's just, it's overload. My husband says there's always, it's amazing that there's so much information that we're all idiots. It, there's <laughs> so much information that we don't, you know, that we, it's, mm-hmm. it's too much. Mm-hmm. We don't know what to believe. It is too what much. It, and, and when you put it like that, so if you look at an overview of what's going on, that's confusion and chaos. Mm-hmm. Is that God's character? No. Okay. Who's that from? The enemy. Yeah. So we need to acknowledge that, that the, all that information. I mean, it's good to have information. And, and some of it may be true. You know, but when we get confused and it get, becomes chaos and stuff, that's not from God. Mm-hmm. And um, it's important to mm-hmm. be aware and step back. I think I think that's been a big issue for me because usually every week you talk, we talk about okay when we get together, it's like okay what have you been, what's been going on this week and what mm-hmm. what you've been feeling and um, and that has been one thing I have um, past few weeks has been confusion and chaos. Just like I've heard everything on this coronavirus i've heard we're all going to die too we're going to get a little sniffly cold and we're we all need to get it or if we get it we're going to die you know Mm -hmm. i'm like oh my goodness oh my goodness Mm -hmm. but you know what i've done is i've backed up i'm like god ultimately whether i'm going to live or i'm going to die or i'm going to get it i'm not going to get it you're in control and i'm trusting you and i'm going to 
you know, wash, sanitize, Mm -hmm. and not put my hands on my face, you know, Mm -hmm. be smart about those things, but um, refocus. It's always refocus on Jesus. We have to refocus, and it's, at in the times we're living, it's a daily thing. Mm-hmm. We have to refocus or it will get so overwhelming. It is. It's on the news. It, I mean, it's on your TVs. It's on your radio stations. Mm-hmm. I mean... It's on the apps. Like, you'll get yeah, notifications pinging on my phone. You know, yeah. this governor is even, now live. This governor is now live. <laughs> seriously. Even on Facebook, it's like, if you want the updates on Corona. I'm like, I don't want the updates. Like, I don't want to... I'm so done with Corona. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Gosh. <laughs> mm-hmm. So this has been my prayer that, that I'm praying to help me refocus. So one of them is a prayer on boundaries. Boundaries mm-hmm. are so important. Boundaries keep us safe. Um, but it's, it's a prayer on boundaries of priorities, like what's really important in our lives. Right. Because our lives are like a vapor. Yeah. You know, it's like a wildflower. It springs up and then it's gone. gone. So what are we going to do? I want quality over quantity. I want whatever amount of time I have on planet earth Mm -hmm. to be of the highest quality. Um, so my prayer, one of them is, um, Holy spirit, Help me say yes to your kingdom, your agenda, the essential things of your kingdom, and help me to say no to the lesser things that seem good to me, but are not essential in Jesus' name. Mm, That is good. So that is a a prayer on boundaries, because as restrictions are getting lifted, you know, Mm -hmm. there's a better way. We don't want to go back to these crazy schedules where we don't even have time to breathe. Mm -hmm. Like, we need to be able to let in the things that God wants to let us to let in the things that are priority and we want to say no and shut down all the busyness Mm -hmm. of how Satan has been keeping us busy because that's an agenda from the enemy is to be overly busy where you can't focus on Jesus so you can't Mm -hmm. spend that time with him and if you can't spend that time with him if you're too busy to spend time with him you need to get up earlier or you need to go to bed later Mm -hmm. or Or you need to say no to some things yes yes absolutely yeah Mm mm-hmm so I think that I think mm-hmm. that these and then are all I'll, the good. second prayer here mm-hmm. I'll add is um, I've been asking Lord and I think this is what he wants from mm-hmm. us. He, Lord, how can I partner with you to spread the message of your kingdom? And let mm. him show you what that is. It might be baking cookies. It might be something really small. It right. might be a smile. It might be to share the joy. It might be for uh, for me. He called mm-hmm. me to do this podcast for this right. time. Mm-hmm. And so whatever that is, let him this week. I challenge you. Ask him how can you partner with him to spread the message of the kingdom and then let him bring that strategy mm-hmm. into your life. I think that's great. And even for the moms that are have their heads in you know, all the the kids stuff and doing the laundry and cleaning the house even. You know, at one time in my life I remember and I you know uh, these, I mean, it's funny because this is one of the times I felt closest to God. Um, doing laundry and blessing each person's clothes, <laughs> you know, and it was, it really, it was, it's, and I, you know, I don't do laundry as much now because, <laughs> because I wait and then it's Amen, a mess I wait and, too. <laughs> yeah, and then my husband gets a little frustrated with me, but I still try to do that. Those are things, you know, even if you feel like you have, you're not going anywhere, you're not seeing other people, anything like that, but you have your family and you're so caught up in just raising your children, bless the clothes, bless yes. the food, you know, pray over them, pray over it. When they put these clothes on that, that the blood of Jesus covers them, you know, that, um, that it it is like their armor for the day, Mm -hmm. you know, all these things, there's, there's, ask the Lord to reveal what he wants you to bless him with. Yes. But, um, well, thank you guys for joining us today. Um, it was so good just to get Mm -hmm. together and I hope you enjoyed it as well. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.